Well, here we are in round 13 of The Good Fight. Thanks so much for joining us today. We're in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 6 through 9. And just before we get into that today, I want to kind of back us up because by the time we get to verse 6, Paul is teasing out this thought that he began at the beginning of chapter 3. And so I want to kind of pull us back there, lay that foundation briefly for us again to kind of help move us forward into where we're headed today. Now, at the beginning of chapter 3, Paul says to Timothy, in the last days, there will come times of difficulty. In other words, for you, Timothy, as you lead the church in Ephesus, you're going to feel the pressure of that. You're going to feel the pressure of what it means to lead, and you may find yourself vulnerable at times uh, to the opinions of others, of expectations that they have of what you should be or things you should say or not say or things you should do or not do. And, and, and there's going to be moments where that's going to be difficult for you. In fact, you may even find yourself in a place where you're not quite sure what the right thing to do is. And then he goes on to say that, that among the difficulty in that are going to be people who Paul says will have a form of godliness, but deny its power. In other words, their lives may be wrapped up in religious activity and religious language, but there's no real transformation of character. While they may talk about spiritual things, it's not really tethered to the truth of the gospel itself. And so not only does Paul say to Timothy at the end of verse 5 to avoid such people, but he also kind of with it presents this idea that Timothy, hey, just be on your guard and make sure that these things don't become true of you as well. And so we pick up in verse 6 where Paul says this, For among them are those who creep into households and capture weak women, burdened with sins and led astray by various passions, always learning and never able to arrive at a knowledge of the truth. Just as Janus and Jambres opposed Moses, so these men also opposed the truth, men corrupted in mind and disqualified regarding the faith. But they will not get very far, for their folly will be plain to all, as was that of those two men. And so, so part of this idea that Paul, you know, as he encourages Timothy to continue in the good fight, to continue fulfilling his ministry, he says that there may be moments where there's going to be some people who, who will creep into households in order to take advantage of someone else. And this language of creeping into implies that it's a stealth-like tactic, that, that it's little by little. And so somebody just shows up at the right moment or they insert themselves into a conversation where it may in some ways seem strange that they're there. And so, so he says, look, these kinds of people, they may even deny that they have an agenda and they may even say they have a good reason for the relationship or for showing up or for, for kind of having influence in that moment. But if you begin to pull back the layers, what you discover is that there's actually something else going on. And what he says is that they creep into households and capture weak women. Now, in this context in particular, it's most likely that Paul has in mind uh, some young women who have found themselves to now be widows. They are in a vulnerable position in their life. Now, it could be anybody. This is, this is not Paul's way of saying uh, that women in general are weak. He's not making a comment about, about women and the desire or the, the strength of their will, but, but it could be anybody. But in this particular context, he has a particular audience in mind. Now, again, it could be, could be any of us that find ourselves in a vulnerable position. And let's not forget that the people who are creeping into these households are men who are trying to take advantage of those who are vulnerable. Because the reality is, is that vulnerable people are the easiest kinds of people to exploit. Why? Well, because they're vulnerable. There are some set of circumstances in their lives at which they are susceptible to all kinds of things. And specifically what Paul mentions is that they, that these women are burdened with sins and led astray by various passions. So there's this overwhelming feeling of shame and guilt uh, as a result of sin. There's, there's a recognition that something is broken inside of them. And whether they can name it or not, it, there's just this attachment to it that, that there's a recognition that all is not right with the world and all is not right with me. There's something wrong and I'm feeling the burden 
of it. And when it's left undealt with, it will eventually consume them. And so, so, so not only are they burdened with particular sins, but they're led along by various passions. Now, this isn't only sensual in terms of, you know, a longing to feel loved or to be loved or in a loving relationship. It's whatever appetite that they may have. It's, it's whatever they chase down to kind of alleviate the pressure of the burden of sin. And he says they're always learning or looking for answers or to find some relief or something that's going to be helpful. They may even pay somebody else else to help them process through it and say, well, this is what you need to do. And here's the four steps. And here's, you know, all the things that will help with what you're going through. But he says they never really arrive at a knowledge of the truth. That is the salvation that's given to us through Christ to relieve the burden of sin. It's a repentance of sin and sinful behavior and aligning our passions with the truth of God's word and his best for us that comes through true godly behavior being set apart for his purpose and desire. And so what ends up happening sometimes for people who find themselves in vulnerable states is that they're lulled to sleep by false teachers who who know how to flatter but who also know how to take advantage and here's what's true is that all of us at some point in our lives can find ourselves in vulnerable situations whether you lost your job and you no longer have an income but you have responsibilities to manage whether you're leading an organization or a group and there are diverse opinions about what direction you should head in or what you should be doing maybe you found yourself in a relationship that's been pulled apart and you are vulnerable and susceptible because of the heartbreak that you feel there's lots of reasons why any of us could find ourselves in a vulnerable situation where we could be open to being exploited by somebody else who was looking to take advantage of us. And then Paul kind of throws back this Old Testament reference in verse 8. He says, hey, you remember Janus and Jambres. These were two guys who opposed Moses. When Moses came under the direction of God to say to Pharaoh, let my people go, uh, Janus and Jambres were the magicians in Moses's court um, who mimicked a lot of what Moses did in the beginning. Um, they began to mimic some of the miraculous things that Moses, by the power of God, could do. And, and, and Paul makes this connection. He says, just like these guys, these men who creep into households and try to exploit vulnerable people, he says, they are corrupted in mind and disqualified regarding the faith. In other words, they are outside of the faith. They're not connected or tethered to the gospel. They oppose the truth. They're not tethered to the word of God. But, but Paul encourages Timothy in a sense with this. He says, don't get too worked up about it because they will not get very far for their folly will be plain to all, as was that of those two men. In other words, they won't last long. Eventually, they're not going to be able to keep up because their emptiness will be exposed. It will be made evident to everybody that there's not really a substance, at least not of the gospel, tethered to all of what they are trying to do in capturing and exploit and expose the vulnerability of other people people. And so one of the things that we ought to do is to pay attention to what's going on in our own lives and our own hearts and our own souls. Who is it in your life, particularly when you find yourself in a vulnerable situation, that you are allowing to have influence or even control over you and the decisions that you are making, especially when you find yourself burdened or longing for something that's just out of reach? Who are you allowing in that will begin to pull you in a particular direction? You need to pay attention to the influences that are in your life. Because the thing is, is that our true strength comes from, from being firmly rooted in the truth of the gospel of being firmly rooted in the word of God, that that is the thing that shapes who we are. And when we are influenced and shaped by the truth of the gospel and the word of God and people of faith, it is a lot harder for us to be pulled into some kind of fake spirituality. We're in our vulnerability. 
we can easily be exploited.